Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a game I haven't yet filmed. This is From the Depths, a game I have quite the love-hate relationship with. I am absolute shit at the game itself, but I love it so much that I have decided to start maybe doing videos, beginning with this one. Uh, so recently, if, if you look at this weird thing here, and, and this weird thing here, and this weird thing here, and these weird blue things coming off of this thing here, and the things with the thing and the light, eh? Um, recently there has been a patch introducing the uh, detection and range finding of enemy vessels with actual equipment as opposed to your AI just suddenly pointing and understanding, oh, this is a thing, this is an enemy, and this is X amount of meters away in that direction and is going blah 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 amount of speed in the other direction. Which to some would seem a bit silly, understandably. Uh, there has been a lot of uprage, outrage, uprage? Outrage. There's been a lot of outrage on at least the uh, Steam discussion about the update, and I hope to clear a little bit up about it. So, to understand this update, we're going to have to understand radar. And, technically, by that way, uh, sonar as well. Radar stands, when you look it up on Wikipedia, it stands for Radio Detection and Ranging. Because using two letters from the same word in an acronym makes sense. Shrug. But anyways, that's what it means. It's basically sending radio waves out in a direction and detecting things by the way it gets pinged back to you. Or if the waves get pinged back to you at all. Which is exactly like sonar except sonar uses high frequency sound waves or low frequency sound waves. Sound waves that we can't actually hear. So now that we understand the basics of radar and sonar, I believe that'll help us understand the update a little bit easier as I plummet into the ocean and die horribly of being starved of our- So, we're gonna start off with blocks. Now, what do you think would be the best way to keep yourself from being detected on radar? If, if radar is basically things being pinged out and you're res detecting things by what you're receiving back, what is the best way to get around pinging back radar rays? Well, just uh, take the light wave approach and deflect the radio waves. So let's see here, we've got wood blocks, stone blocks, metal blocks, lightweight alloy blocks, glass blocks, uh, lead blocks, heavy armor, uh, ERA blocks, light blocks, rubber blocks, and surge protectors. These all have their own radio um, reflectivity rating. It's it's a little bit, it's, it's not written in the best way it could be, but it helps give you an idea of how well it reflects radio waves back to the uh, emitter. Wooden blocks, uh, this block has only a few faces, which are all machined to a good flatness and is made of a material that has a regular radar return. These will... These are sort of in the middle. These are in the middle, they reflect... They reflect pretty well, but not, not extremely well. Which, it, it's an all-round substance. Mm. Do what you will with it. Stone blocks um, are absolute garbage in that respect. They reflect really well because they've got a whole bunch of surfaces that might reflect a radio wave back to the thing that's pinging. 
uh, metal blocks are the same way because they got um, it says in the description groves, bevels, rivets, rounded surfaces, etc. Uh, it's poorly flattened. Uh, the lightweight alloy block is the confusing one. It's insanely good at deflecting radio waves. It, this is pretty simplified. You're not going to make a stealth jet just by taking a substance that is badly flattened and uh, curving it off into like that classic angular stealth bomber shape. But... Um, the material you do use uh, has a huge effect on whether you're radar prone or not. Um, apparently this this texture which is used for the lightweight alloy block which has a stupid amount of bevels uh, it's got that ragged edge on the edge of the steel plates it's got rivets all over the place those might be screws you'd expect that to be really detectable but it's actually not in the description it says it's designed to have a low radar return uh, I don't know whether that's because the material is anechoic in some way and it actively absorbs the radio waves I, I don't know what they're talking about here uh, the texture of the the block itself is, um, it, it doesn't really put that on, does it? Uh, glass blocks are, eh, they're, they're okay again. Uh, lead blocks are, strangely enough, also okay again. Though if you've seen lead in real life, it's all ropey and shit. Uh, heavy armor, which you'd expect by the texture to be really flat and nice and smooth is actually uh, really really radar reflective it's I, I think they might be counting like this glowy emission coming out of the cracks in between the hex plates um, maybe these uh, beveled surfaces where it, the material dips down into the cracks uh, the ERA armor is, it's, it's not good, it's not bad, it's the average again, even though it's covered in giant grooves because of how ERA bricks are made. Uh, light blocks, in the middle, I, I can't really complain, I, I, I don't ever use the light blocks, they seem kind of, kind of useless to me. Uh, rubber blocks are really weird because they're also really really hard to detect by radar I even though that's friggin diamond plated steel in the texture that makes no sense and surge protectors even though you'd expect that to be really ropey because of how it's made uh, it's also just just average it's just average I can't really complain about that because I use those so often um, propellers are Eh, again, it's it's that medium, it's that middle ground. Rudders, that middle ground. Air pumps, that middle ground, even though they're round. Yeah, we'll be getting into that a little later. Uh, paddles, eh, they're flat surfaces. Uh, is, is that middle ground again. Air, yeah. Uh, to counter the balance of uh, lightweight alloy being really hard to detect on radar, we got jet engines, which are full of curves, bevels, corner cubes, and other highly radar reflective surfaces. So it's really easy to detect on radar and sonar. Um, though you're not going to get sonar in the air, you're going to get that in the water. So if your plane goes into the water, you fucked. Though that's kind of easy to imagine. That's kind of obvious. Um, ion thrusters. Um... It's radar return is lower than more complex objects. Yeah, here's where the description of how ref radar reflective a thing is gets a little bit weird. Um, it's it, it should show me a numerical value rather than this easily misinterpreted description. It's 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 odd. I I don't understand it really. 
I, I understand it might be it might be better than maybe average but it also might be worse than average so I, I don't know what it's trying to tell me here um, it's rate of return is lower the more complex objects so if so if you go into say gun barrels go into gun barrels yeah gun barrel this component is curved it definitely returns with strong radar signals in a large number of directions well see because it's round and therefore you're gonna hit at least one tiny sliver that is going to ping back to your uh, parabolic antenna because they're designed to act that way high explosive pellets this this is all round because the ammunition is round uh, this it's it's complex it's a complex object you see round shit you see weird shit interface screen roughly cuboid or other simple geometrical shape uh, its radar return is lower than most complex objects yada 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 it's, basically if it's squarish it if it's squarish it it's gonna be relatively unreflective but if it's like round if it's complex it's going to have more than one surface that's going to reflect the radar signal then you're a little bit boofed in the butt now honestly with the way this stuff is described that looks pretty round to me even though it's a little low poly that looks pretty round to me that looks pretty round to me that looks really round to me that's round that's round that's round maybe the, maybe the developers didn't get to some of this stuff but the fact that stuff like this is not counted as round and it says it's the average flatness is a little bit weird it's a little bit weird all right so detection equipment let's get into detection equipment that's fun well first of all we have this giant yellow thing saying you need detection equipment or your AI will be blind um, if you look in the options here where is it one cubic meter automatic detection accuracy this this is the thing this is the thing um, shit my my webcam is covering that so badly um, but anyways this this here th all you need to know is this slider decides whether or not you actually need the detection hardware in order to detect enemy vessels and get good range finding bearings and stuff uh, if you put this to zero, you're definitely going to require um, the detection hardware. If you put it at one, you're not going to need it, and it's like back to pre-patch. So we're going to keep that off for now because this is just a this is just a demonstration video. <sighs> Anyways, detection equipment itself. First off, we have the radar 360. This is your this is your all purpose. This this pings off radar signals to everywhere at once. Let's see here. Um, it's it's pretty. It's it's relatively average. It, it pings off in every direction that it can see from. That's right. You actually need a uh, line of sight. Glass can be used for most of these things, as far as I know. If not all of these things, glass can be used and it will not block line of sight. Um, the Radar 360 needs an undestructed line of sight directly out of the vehicle in the forwards, backwards, left, right, and upwards direction in order to enable detection in those directions because it can't see down. It can't see down through itself. That's, that's otherwise, how would you place it? I, I think that's relative to the block though. As far as I know, that's relative to the block itself and not relative to uh, how your ship is oriented. So if you place that block upside down on the bottom of your airship or whatever, that's going to ping downwards. Uh, that, that'll be fine. Um, that's This is pretty average. 
in fact, it's relatively bad if you think about it. The angular error in the bearing to the target is 2 degrees. Uh, range error is 0.4%. Four, um, creates a detection 10 times per second, so it will detect something. Uh, it will try to detect in all directions 10 times per second. Um, requires 1.5 units of general processing power. See, we're, we're going to get into this. General purpose processing cards need to be used now. You're going to be using connectors all the friggin' time. Uh, you don't need the card slots, though you can connect it to... You can connect the general purpose processing cards to the card slots. It's not necessary. Usually I just use the six-way connectors because you can get a lot of surface area out of them. And you're not wasting resource because these are two and these are ten. You know, because the you use generic material now instead of oil, metal, etc. Which you you know what simplification is nice, I guess. Trying to get people into the game, and then there's the shit. <laughs> um, one of the most important things I think is the intra vehicle transmitter. Uh, this pings information from your current ship's uh, hardware to other ships in the fleet in the immediate vicinity, which is really important. It's, it's really nice if you want to have, like, one fat scout boat. And everyone else is just blind point of shooties. Um, but the wireless snooper here can pick up vehicles with wireless transmitters and receivers and find their bearing and approximate range. The probability of detection is based on the distance that the enemy wireless transmitters need to transmit to reach all of the receivers. So basically, the closer an enemy with this is, um, the more likely it is that you're going to get detected if you have one of these intravehicle transmitters. However, wow, I didn't even realize it. That on its own is really bad for detection because it's got an angular error because uh, if you if you compare it to the radar 360 2 degrees 0.4 percent this is 10 degrees and 15 percent not 0.15 whole 15 creates a detection one times per second that's a tenth of what the radar does um, requires one unit of general processing power uh, instrument has a relative detection of range of one that doesn't really matter because that's just whatever that's just the range uh, the sonar is basically the sonar 360 is basically your radar 360 except used underwater so it's good for detecting uh, submarines etc um, the radar 90 detects forward out of itself um, at a 90 degree box angle uh, the sonar does the same thing except for underwater uh, the IR uh, the IR camera and the camera the camera uses line-of-sight detection to detect uh, above water targets based on their above water surface area and orientation it provides good bearing accuracy but poor range estimation accuracy mainly because it's one eye. Imagine if you close your one eye, that's all your depth perception pretty much gone. That's going to be terrible for looking and seeing how far out the target is. That's that's the logic I'm getting from that. Uh, the retroreflection sensor can actually um, detect the reflections uh, from your camera 360. Uh, can pass through glass optics, but not be detected by color camera sensors. Laser will find optical, optical, 
octuple, <laughs> optical, there's eight of them, optical uh, components such as the wireless camera, camera 90, camera 316, camera gimbal tracker, and provide accurate detection on them. It's relatively good. It's one degree, um, it's better than Radar 360 at least. It's, it's, it's got a one degree angular error. It's got 0.1% range error. It's got five times per second this can detect things. Um, and requires 0.1 unit of general processing power, which is pretty great. Uh, it's it's pretty low bear. Um, the camera 360 is let's see here. What's the what's the requirement? Oh wow, this this thing's range is half compared to most other things. Um, the IR camera is also 0.5, but this thing cannot be seen by the retro reflection sensor, which I don't get. I don't get. Maybe IR cameras work differently than regular cameras. I, I don't know. But anyways, this detects. This is good at detecting hot targets, specifically hot targets. So if you have a cold target that's de deliberately camouflaging itself so that it can't be seen by infrared, this thing can't see it. Obviously, um, the angular error is no, no. These are relatively similar, except this thing creates a detection 15, uh, 10 times per second as opposed to 15. Uh, this thing requires less general processing power. This one requires 0.5 more, 2.5 as opposed to 2.0. Uh, can can see in all directions because it's an IR. It's it's 360 stuff. Um, passive radar listens for enemy radar signals. Um, it's it's basically radar 360, but in the reverse. It absorbs radar signals and creates a detection based on that, rather than pinging and reflecting. Uh, sonar is the same way, except underwater. And the passive radar and the passive sonar require uh, less actual power to use. Damn, I tell a lie, actually. This thing requires one entire general processing power more. <laughs> I tell a lie, I tell a lie. Uh, these are actually the same, I don't get that. But whatever, this thing detects ten times per second the same as the radar. Uh, the passive sonar detects ten times per second, which is actually more than the sonar 360. Uh, this thing has more range error and more angular error. This thing has, let's see, yeah, this thing seems to have the same issue, 0.1% more range error and 0.5 degrees more angular error. Generally, these are just these, except a little bit less precise, and you're less likely to be detected by these things. Uh, you're, le you're not likely to be detected by the passive radar and passive sonar because you're using them in... S you're, you're detecting other radars and sonar signals rather than making them yourselves to actively go out and uh, ping things. Uh, camera 90, IR camera 90, they're, they're basically, you know, the same variants of the camera 360, IR camera 360, except they detect forwards and in a 90 degree box angle. Uh, camera gimbal trackers. Trackers are basically... Trackers lock on to already detected targets and track them for, I would think, extra accuracy. But this thing is, like, y you compare y your camera 360 to your... Hmm. No, I tell a lie again. Yeah, 
Yeah, this thing is generally better than the uh, camera 90 and the camera 360. This thing, these things are just basically for your extra accuracy on top of what you already have. Um, same with the radar gimbal tracker. I, I was actually surprised. How do you gimbal track by radar? I, I guess it's possible. Um, the laser rangefinder. Yeah, you remember? You remember this model? You remember this model? The, yeah, these are the old uh, detector models from like early, early games, or rather early, early versions of the game when they were going to have this stuff and they just botched it, so they didn't put it in completely. Um, the laser rangefinder tracker will track an already detected target. It's basically an automatic rangefinder. Yeah, that's very good. It's a laser rangefinder, and it's very, very good compared to, say, your uh, camera gimbal tracker, your IR camera gimbal tracker, because, well, it's, it's a friggin' laser. It's a laser, and it detects 15 times per second, which is a lot. Uh, though not compared to the camera tracker, because that's 25. Damn. And the IR is 40. <laughs> Holy nipples. Um, yeah, tracking components cannot create initial detections on a target. You must have a wider field of view systems to... You must have wider field of view systems to provide these. Yeah, because these, these detect in a very, very small field of view. 10, 10 degrees by 10 degrees. That's... An entire circle of 10 degrees and that's that's not gonna detect much on its own because it's so it's so narrow it's like looking through a friggin tube and you all know what it's like to have like terrible field of view in a game forced on you you can't see shit and it feels it feels like it's making you sick it feels like it's making you sick uh, missile sonar and buoy holders uh, the, these are going to be talked about later but for now, we're going to have the coincidence rangefinders. These these are the cool little things that you see over here. Yeah, yeah, these. Um, these basically work like stereoscopic gunner sights. Um, <clears throat> you have your one eye, and you have your other eye, and these both look at a target to triangulate exactly what the range is and how fast they're going and where exactly on the map in relation to you that they are. Um, they're pretty good compared to cameras and stuff, though they're no match for tracking. Uh, and of course, the wider apart the eyes get, uh, the more accurate they get. So you have your five meter wide uh, range pointer, which is a range error of two percent, and you have this one, which is a range error of one point one recurring percent. That's actually a fair amount if we're talking about a giant. If we're talking about the accuracy of a giant gun weapon that desperately needs to make sure it doesn't overshoot and it doesn't undershoot. Uh, perhaps it doesn't matter as much if you have. Um, a laser, perhaps, because then you just point and shooty. You, you take the laser, you point and shooty. And it doesn't matter what the range is, because those are pretty much infinite range. You just point them at the target. Uh, guns, you gotta make sure you don't overshoot or undershoot, because missing in this game, the shells don't explode on impact with water now, do they? Um... And now for the interesting part, there were a few changes in the missile systems. Uh, the missile sonar buoy holder and the missile radar buoy holder are important parts if you have the new parts on your missile. Now we're gonna take a look at these. Uh, these this, by the way, is the new default uh, shipbuilder craft. Now what we've got here is active radar seeker which is basically uh, the radar lasers a target well technically lasers a target it doesn't actually shoot a 
laser. It just detects a target and will target above water targets based on their radar profile. Uh, any vehicle with a passive radar sequel, uh, sequel? Uh, passive radar detector will create missile warnings on these missiles if they become the target of the missile. Basically, uh, the less radar reflective uh, part of the craft is, uh, the tastier it is, the tastier it is to the active radar seeker. I don't know, I, I'm not entirely sure whether it is that the radar on your ship uh, pings out and creates a target for the active radar seeker, or the active radar seeker actually pings out itself for targets. Um, I haven't I haven't tested that yet, but it's a good thing to keep in mind. And now the sonar boy and the radar boy, uh, buoy boy. Um, the sonar buoy, uh, you basically attach that to your say your your mass dropped uh, sea mines, your magnet mines, anything with a ballast tank on it, basically. Uh, that bobs up and down on the surface of the water. Um, and this thing, the sonar buoy, when attached to a missile and attached uh, the holder, the respective holder is attached to your craft, um, it will detect, it will detect uh, things by sonar or radar. Um, based on what it is and you don't actually need it I, I'm I don't know how accurate the sonar and radar uh, detector buoys are in comparison to the actual uh, sonar and radar parts that you can get I haven't actually tested that and there are no actual numbers so I don't think we'll ever know that that seems like an oversight to me it seems like an oversight uh, the radar only detects above water, if you recall, and the sonar only detects things underwater, if you recall. And that's basically the update in a huge, giant, all-encompassing nutshell. There are a few changes, like, say, uh, a fair amount more blocks that you can use. Um, Perhaps some that we've needed that aren't available yet, but there, there are a lot more to fill the gla the gaps, the gaps, which is nice. Um, <clears throat> damn, who designed this? That barrel is gonna go right through the rangefinder, or just get stopped by the rangefinder and is is not gonna hit anything on the left side. That makes no sense. <sighs> Physics in this game are weird. But anyways, um, this has been the broken set with a long-ass video encompassing the new changes in From the Depths. Uh, please like and subscribe. I am so lonely. Um, and stay fractally.